Yeah, Mario from Niagara Specialties, as I remember, as I mentioned earlier on, he's the owner or co-owner of it. Dario has used him for years, so we're going to get the two of them talking. We've got some great pictures and slides of the products because this is top-notch for charcuterie boards, for um, cooking with, for eating. You're going to love it. So we're going to share some of those. Um, this is Anita and Dario's Adventures, and we're at, we're listening to you. You asked for more product information, more interview information, so that's what we're doing and, and bringing on more quality things around food and travel. So a couple things I wanted to cover, again, Niagara Specialties, top-notch product, um, a special offer for our International Dinner Club members is going to be coming soon and later in this half-hour segment. Um, we also have some free resources that are available at oliveyourlife.org. Uh, we've got uh, Three Secrets from Bored to Inspired. We've got uh, the Eight Principles of the Mediterranean Lifestyle that you can download. And it's sort of what we talk about is we are sort of the branch to the Mediterranean lifestyle and way of living. And we also have our challenge that's coming up November 15th. So if you see this before November 15th, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. It's around food and travel lovers. It's about getting inspired again. Um, you know, if you're bored with what you're cooking, if you're wanting to find more adventure in your life, it's all around that. And come on over and I'll, I guess I'll put the link in here somewhere below. So if you get this before November 15th and see this, you'll love and come to join us. So anyway, now I'm going to introduce uh, Mario and bring him in. The man, the legend. <laughs> now we haven't done this in a bit with... Um, oh, he's there. Look at him. So we're hoping that this is going to come up fine. I'm going to go in the background here and have Dario sort of introduce Mario properly and uh, get through some of the stuff. Well, you know, I can see Mario is coming around. There he is. There he is. He's coming. He's coming to us. I like Mario. your thumbs up. You look like Don Cherry from... Uh, Don Cherry. Mario Pinway. Look at yeah. that. Look at the background. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're going to get some salami here too, I hope. I'm just trying to text my staff if they can... <laughs> This is the yeah. best thing about live interview. You improvise things, things start just happening. Yeah. So, um, well, I would love to start with you guys as I pop up from here. Yeah. <laughs> How do you guys know each other? Where did you meet? Let's hear a little bit of history yeah. because that's always exciting. We don't want to. We don't want to go too much into the industry, Mario. And one one man who had vision. His name is Ferruccio Dallevale. That's right. Is that correct, Dario? That's right. That's right. <laughs> Go ahead, take over from there. Oh, uh, that's right. Yeah. So there was a Ferruccio della Valle, this gentleman. Then he um, actually opened a restaurant in uh, in Niagara Lake called Il Giardino, and um, so both myself and Mario were working there, yep. and and that's I met this incredible and full of energy, young man at the time. We were both young, Mario, then, all right? Still young. Yeah, we're still young, yeah, but energy. And, yeah. uh, and we became good friends. I mean, it was a group of, of, uh, of people. I, I always say my time in Niagara was probably the most memorable time because I really um, spent time enjoying good quality with good friends. Yes. And, uh, you know, as a young group of guys you know at night after the restaurant we go out and have some fun uh, you know on the other side of the river we used to call it which is uh, Niagara Falls New York and we have some time and sometimes the night will get a little bit longer sometimes a little bit early morning but the best memory and I was talking to Mario uh, a few days ago is a, a person that inspires me and I actually if anybody follow follow uh, through Facebook, I posted a, a, a picture of him, which is the, one of the most inspirable person that actually started this whole thing. And this is Mario Pingue Sr., which is Mario's dad. And we used to go late at night, two, three o'clock in the morning, maybe four o'clock, I don't remember. Underneath the cantina of Mario's dad, and basically having a buffet until uh, early hour in the morning, Mario. Dante. Yeah, yeah, good snacks. Well, just a little background on that. My father, when I was in high school, for late night, we'd do a drive through And so I'd say, guys, let's do a drive through We'll go back to my house and eat it. At least my dad could sleep with some rest, right? One day he comes in, he looks at that hamburger. He tears it apart with his big mitts. How do you eat this junk? 
and says, sorry, I know, okay, corporate America, I apologize right now, but he just tore it apart. He goes, we're eating, I don't know what kind of fiber this is. Don't bring it back in my house. I said, okay. So that was implicitly saying, go to the cantina and go enjoy that. And I think he regretted it maybe after that. So your dad, your dad started the business, right? Yeah, he's always been doing it. Uh, my my dad got into catering and and restaurants, so um, there wasn't a lot of. Uh, uh, he did it out of necessity because back in the seventies, um, prosciutto from Parma and San Daniele wasn't permitted in North America, and so there there wasn't a, a great selection of quality products. So he just did what he knew how to do growing up from the old country. And he made it for his own restaurant and catering. And then uh, my brother and I sort of reluctantly followed the footsteps. Uh, that's the way food business is. And uh, we got re-inspired uh, working at the gatehouse with guys like Dario. And um, we, 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 we started making changes to our menu and how we did things. And um, we continued making a charcuterie. It was uh, very simple, never easy, but it's always simple. Sea salt and a piece of pork. And then and doing, uh, and let, doing it the right way. Yeah, and let time take over and let it do its thing. And, uh, I love that story about there wasn't much product at the time because my parents immigrated from Holland in 1958. And they came in through Halifax, uh, Pier 21. And so Dario and I actually went back there and we went to the museum. And you know, they were talking a lot of Italian immigrants had come in there, a lot of Dutch immigrants and the rest of it. We actually saw the boat my parents came in on everything. It was really interesting. But as we went through, they were talking about the Italians and how hard it was when they came with their suitcase and their container of, of, of items to come and immigrate to Canada. And they took all the food away from them. They didn't care about anything else. Don't take my food away. So they would take away the meats. They were taking away the breads. And they were saying that the Italian people, everybody, um, they were giving them cans of Spam. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and, and, and what horror it was to get this, this meat in a can that they were having available. And it was really an interesting story. Sorry, guys. Oh, yeah, it was. Ah! Ah! Special, <laughs> such, special guest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was such an interesting story. And I know when my parents, when, when I was younger, we would always go to the Italian grocery store because it was the closest at the time to European that my parents knew. So yeah, yeah. Um, it's kind of interesting that you say that. Yeah. They, they, you know, it's, it's amazing because inspiration, you get it from people like Mario. I, I get inspired every time I see his dad because to me, he's still a very an iconic person. And Mario too. And Mario and Mario, Junior and Senior. Both. Yeah. But we go back, we go back, uh, Mario, correct me if I'm wrong. We go back in 19... Uh, 90, I, I probably, 1989. Probably, yeah, that's when we start. But when, when I was at Oro... Um, oh, right. From that's when we start. Yeah. That's when we really start. And, and, and this product comes out. And I remember Mario Senior, Mario's dad, and we kind of connected, stating, you know, we have some product that we are developing. I said, oh my God, if the Pingue are doing the product, the product, it's gonna be top notch. And sure enough, um, we started using only and exclusively Niagara Fruit Speciality product from all the charcuterie, every single piece. And the difference, and the difference was shown, and Ma I'm gonna let Mario explain why this part is so special. But I wanna finish with one thing. I brought a friend of mine, very well known in a Langirana region, Parma region. And, um, and I said, listen, I, while you're here and visit, I would like you to take you to a personal friend of mine, Daniel has probably one of his best products for charcuterie. And he says, better than Parma? I said, well, you judge it. So I don't know if you remember, Mario, we drove down and Mario was kind enough to create almost like the little display in front of his store in the Canada side, uh, in Niagara. And I remember my friend, Giovanni, tasting the product, looking at me and impactfully said to me, oh my God, Dario, this is almost better than Parma, if not better. And that's it. Um, so I really wanna, want you to kind of explain to us first, why so special? 
the kind of the all around that. And Mario, did yep. you want us to share the PowerPoint or you just want to gen generally go over it first? We've got oh, some people yeah. in here that are going to ask some questions. Sure. Hello, Elaine. Hello, Kinsley. Hello, um, John. It's wonderful to have you guys here. So um, did you just want to explain briefly or? Yeah. So uh, for us, the, um, you know, the, uh, the name Niagara Food Specialties is, is important. I mean, we didn't want to be... Um, Italia or Salamis or uh, Abruzzo or what have you, because that's not where I'm from and it's not where the product is being made. And, and in Europe, nomenclature is very important. I mean, um, Chianti means that the grape, the wine in that bottle is gonna have Sangiovese, 80, 90%, and maybe 10% something else. And it denotes something very specific. And um, when someone says, hey, are you like Parma? No, we're not like Parma, and I can never ever be like Parma because I'm an eight hour flight away. And so we, you know, in North America, we have excellent pork available to us. Um, and then we have the Italian tradition, no doubt. I mean, if uh, what my father taught us and what I went back to learn uh, in, you know, doing a stage in San Daniele and in Bologna, you, you learn and you take that tradition. So I think the important part for us is that we are very much rooted in the Italian tradition using local, and I say local in parentheses because um, local has to be good. If it's not good, you open up your circle. And I, I always tell customers when I go on a sales pitch, don't buy me because I'm local, buy me because it's good. And if I'm good, then I hope I can be sold in California, in Montreal, as well as in Niagara. And, uh, um, and if it's not good, it ain't gonna sell, period. And uh, so, we really want to separate ourselves by, you know, quality ingredients and sticking to traditional practices. So, you know, obviously, obviously there is an history behind the product, right, Mario? So, mm -hmm. and, and, and um, you know, I want to kind of, um, so I don't know if you want to show a little bit of, of maybe the PowerPoint so we can kind of see where the product comes from, but also Mario, after the PowerPoint or maybe during the PowerPoint, you can, you can tell us a little bit of where the story of the product comes from. So from the animal, who grows it, what it gets fed and yeah. the whole process, because people don't really understand that there is a lot of work behind it. There is yeah. a lot of hard work. There is a lot of passion. There is yeah. a lot of uh, caring and there is a, a huge investment into yeah. this, this, this enterprise. And, and Dario, you hit a, an important point. You said, tell us about the pork. When, uh, when my dad was doing it at his, on his, at his farm in the cantina, right. um, he had a, a lady who would raise pigs for her, a German lady, and uh, she would raise goats and she would continue milking the goats. She would make cheese for her family and that, and the way, et cetera, she'd feed to our pigs. And you could taste the difference from the pigs we bought from her versus a pig from another small farmer. Exactly. And they were raising pigs like, you know, they, they had an open barn and my dad would ask, can you raise, you know, 10 pigs for me or whatever? And they agree on a price and they would take care of it. So when my brother and I decided to take it out of the cottage and, you know, make it into a viable business, we didn't realize, we thought everybody was raising pigs like the, you know, like the farmers that were working with my father. We thought everyone did it naturally. So we called the local abattoir and we started getting meat and we started producing it like we always did. And then, you know, two, three, four months into it, we start tasting and I'm going, it doesn't taste like dad's. What's going on here? We're going, you know, I call the guys in Italy that taught me, Mario, are you doing this? Mario, are you doing that? Are you covering everything we covered? I says, yeah, I'm doing everything. And what happens? Well, tell us about the pig. I go, what do you mean tell you about the pig? Uh, pork is pork, right? <laughs> and uh, no, no, you better find out what you're getting in. Something's up because we've had your dad's product. It was excellent. So there should be no reason. You should, you should be good too. And sure enough, as we looked into it, we finally realized, you know, the movement of being certified organic or naturally raised started happening as we were starting our business, thankfully. And we were able to hook up with a cooperative out of Quebec and later they branched into Ontario farms and we were able to buy from the cooperative and everything is third party certified, uh, naturally raised without any box of growth promotants, access to pasture and then, uh, humanely treated from far to finish. 
And on the U.S. side, uh, we're at the same uh, level, if not even higher now. So that the, the pork is important, the, the ing initial ingredients, no doubt. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And when you say organic, where does that come into play? Well, uh, organic is a very, very high standard, and it's 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 almost tough to get uh, because it, it's such a small production. Um, organic goes right back to the feeds as well. So everything has to be non-GMO or certified organic feed. And then the pigs have to be raised organically, access to pasture. Um, and it, it's, it's a pretty high standard. And it's, like I said, the, 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 it's almost tough to deal with. It's almost tough to get a constant supply. Our next level is where the animals are, um, they're, they're, they could be in barns and they have access to pasture. They get to go in and out. And some of the farms, they grow organically, but because they have neighboring farms that may not be organic growers, there's gonna be crosswinds, there's gonna be cross semination of non-GMO feed with GMO feed. So they could technically be 90% organic and they might have, unfortunately, some GMO in there. And they, so because they can't make that 100% certification, they go to this next level. And that's where we buy predominantly most of our pork. And then, uh, and then there's other farms that are geared strictly to be, uh, it's called the uh, GAP, there's a, um, it's called the uh, Global Alliance Partnership for Animal Welfare. And we get step three as a minimum standard. And if you visit their website, they'll have everything uh, delineated. There we go, there's a mouthful. Yeah. yeah. It's incredible. Right. I mean, the, the, what, what goes into this stuff? I mean, you know, if people don't understand it, you know, yeah. In order yeah. to have a high standard product, you need to have a high standard resource. Yeah. And it's, it's also yes. for, you know, like the quality of the taste and what you're dealing with, but it's also what you're putting into your body. You know, it's yeah. really, really important to have that high quality that goes into your body. So yeah. okay, I'm going to share the PowerPoint now. For some reason, Mario, we usually have a split screen where you can see both of us talking. Yep. Right now it's directly on you. It is right on you, that's, which is which is. Oh, all right. Earlier on, it was just on us, so hopefully we have this figured out. Okay. It's more important the quality and the content that we're putting out too. So. And Anita, you bring up a good point too. Like, I mean, if if it isn't healthy, um, what's the point of it? Uh, right there, you're looking at a prosciutto that came from a, that's a certified uh, organic Berkshire ham. Uh, yeah. that came out of Ontario and those uh, we're pretty much done on those characters but those we aged for a minimum of 24 months and you know people would say well sell it to me younger and I don't pay as much why would I it's not about price it's about at 18 months that ham was a big ham it wasn't ready for the marketplace there's no cheaper because it's younger for our business yeah you go to a lot of prosciutto features they'll have the different ages based on price We'll sell it to you at 12 months. We'll sell it at 14, 16, 18, 24. No, we release our prosciutto when it's ready. If it usually we find it's a minimum of uh, 18 months for our for our Ontario hogs that we get. But um, if it's a bigger ham, it, it stays longer. We're not going to take it down, debone it, package it, and then send out a product that doesn't meet the expectation of the customer. So now when it, this stuff I find it melts in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. That's, you know, whenever we've gotten this from you, it's just and we put it on a charcuterie board or anything, it yeah. just melts in your mouth. It's so delicious. Now, when you sell this to people, do you sell the whole leg or do you sell it in slices? Yeah, we uh, for the retail market, we sell it in slice packs. Uh, we do have some customers that would still take it exactly like it appears like that, a uh, whole bone in. And then we also uh, sell it in chunks, deboned. And then we'll break it down into smaller pieces, depending on the customer and their need. Because you can use it as a charcuterie, but you have to have it very thinly sliced. Yeah. But the bigger pieces you could cook with or do things too, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, you could even hand cut it. Like, um, I, I'm starting to get back to the way I, I was growing up. My dad would hand cut the prosciutto, and the slices would be a little bit thicker, maybe 16th of an inch or what have you. But if it's aged, it breaks apart nicely on the palate. It's more of a chew because it's thicker but it's still very palatable and very flavorful. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now this one is something you guys have to talk about. Capocollo. This yeah. is my favorite. Mario, you know, I don't know. They, they, they have two of my my personal favorites. This one is a very underestimated product. And yes. in a sense, then it's, it's not easy to do. No. 
but it's one of the most delicious products. And I'll tell you a story about this, Omar, and then I'm gonna let you be with it. Yep. Uh, explain to, to everyone. Capocollo in the past to me, it was one of the products Then if I would have get it anywhere, it used to give me an incredible amount of heartburn. The, I, I had a hard time to digest it. Yep. And again, we go back to the way I could eat a full piece of Capocollo from Mario and not, and not have, a, do I, no feeling, feel really good and the product is absolutely natural, which is pretty much the outcome of this. Yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah, the Copa Cola or Copa is, uh, it's a continuation of the, from about the shoulder blade up to the collar of the hog. I don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, okay. yeah. And, and that's where the loin becomes really nicely marbled and um, the fat content is very important. And uh, Dario, you know, about eating it and ingesting it, even my staff of the new, new people that we hire, they go, I can't believe how clean it tastes, how it's just, you, you taste the saltiness, you taste the sweetness of the pork, and that's it. And, and people often ask us, do you do different flavors? We really have cycled back on the spices and say, no, we want the pork to be forward. You see how clean it is and, and it's how tasty and and easily to digest, very easy to digest. It's, it's we, have, we have some some questions here. If I don't, if you don't mind me interrupting here, sure. um, do you ship outside of Ontario? Um, and then there's making comments about the picture being so wonderful. It looks delicious. Um, it tastes better. <laughs> tastes, yeah, that's right. It tastes as good as it looks. Other chemicals. Is it lacking? Yeah, okay. oh. I guess that's true. It's all natural, right? That is yeah, so that that particular cut is just sea salt and the muscle, the pork. And yeah. then when we if we take it out, um, we give it a rub of a little bit of lardo with a touch of peperoncino, but I mean just a hint and maybe a touch of black pepper. Oh, that um, sounds delicious. Kind of adhering to our tradition. My dad back in the day would put, he would really coat it with a lot of chili, but we've really gone back from that. Yeah. Yeah. And do you ship outside of Ontario? Uh, we can from our, we have a new US facility and we can do it from there. Uh, same product, uh, same process. And that's, and that's coming up next month, right? Yeah, we should have our, uh, we hope to have it up before Christmas. Yeah, yeah. So by the time people are watching this or want to be able to order something, it's almost like it's now anyway. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Okay, let's that's go to the next one. Oh, that's that's a, another favorite, right, Dario? Yes. <laughs> this is a, yeah, I mean, yeah. You know, I, I want you just people to look at this picture. And, and, and I mean, and this is the picture of the product, the way you get it. It's the, how beautiful and fresh, because that looks freshness right there. Yeah. So that piece there probably ages for about six, six to seven months. And uh, in Italy, uh, traditionally, they don't leave that center meat part. They would just do the lardo, the top strata, with a little bit of the meat attached at the bottom. Uh, we decided to keep the whole thing because we thought for the Canadian market, it would have been, you know, being the first on the marketplace to do it in the area, lardo would have been a tough sell in by itself. But having the little bit of meat, uh, you know, uh, gives a little more complexity to the flavor profile, a better chew. And it's an easier way to initiate people into what Lardo is all about. And Anita, we should probably talk a little bit about fat. How come you could eat that fat and not get sick? <laughs> Who told or... you that I'm, uh, I'm uh, a little crazy about fat? Yeah. Sorry, so a lot of people. That story? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of people shy away because they say, "Oh, uh, you know, the fat's not good for you." I mean, uh, any dietitian will tell you you do need fat in your diet. Just stay within the suggested daily limits. Don't go eating half a pound of lonza. But I would come out of the gym sometimes in the morning at seven o'clock, get into work. I have three, four slices of that. I forget about lunch. And I was good till two, three in the afternoon, have an apple, and I'd get home for dinner. I mean, it, it's excellent. Um, it's a slow burn. It's, you know, you're, you're, it, the, the energy is there. A lot of omega-3 and omega-6. L. Uh, the, uh, the cholesterols that aren't good for us during the aging process are consumed by the enzymes. And, uh, and that's, the... that's a huge point because one of the reasons I don't eat huge. a lot of fat is because I, I, was, I was six years old, was diagnosed with high cholesterol, our family was. 
and it's a family history of that. So I do eat a certain way and cut out fat thinking that, but it's so true. If you have something that the enzymes actually cut that back, that's that's a big thing for people. It's huge. Yeah. yeah, huge. And you'll notice too, when you cook with our products, um, particularly the pancetta and guanciale, which is more lean for cooking, whereas the lonza is better served uh, like that, uh, at room temperature right off the slicer. If you cook with our pancetta or guanciale, if you see the rendered fat in the pan and you let it come to room temperature, it does not solidify. Wow. It remains as an oil or a liquid. And that's an indication of the uh, LDL and HDL fats that are present. If it was like a, um, a bacon fat that was not aged, or even a fresh steak and you cook it in your pan and the rendered fat, it solidifies at room temperature, it becomes white and it's greasy. Ours remains like an oil. So it's easily assimilated by the body. Yeah. And uh, again, you don't go eating a, you know- when Everything you're in the, moderation, right? Yeah, when you're making a crostini, you uh, just have one or two and not yeah. uh, the whole pan full. Well, that's so, what we talk about. Everything is about healthy eating in moderation. But I know myself, whenever I cook and I put something in the fridge, I wait for whatever solidifies and I'll take it off because I think right. that if that's going to harden in, in when it's cold, it's going to harden in my arteries as well. So exactly, I always keep that in mind. And that's a, that's a really, really good thing to know. So yeah. I always talk Mario yes. and, I, and, I, and I preach for it. And I, and I do preach because I agree 100% with you. You know, let's go back to our ancestor, you know, my grandfather, your father's father, and all. You know, how they will stay, do a full day of work, a really heavy work. Yeah. This stuff. Because yeah. we talk about good fat and bad fat. You know, yeah. especially yeah. when you're looking into a, a shakuri pro or a salumi, like we yeah. call it in Italy. Yes. You know, the, first, yes. The, the first thing they used to come in the morning, I remember it was what? A glass of wine, okay? And then stale bread with uh, some guanciale or prosciutto, whatever it was. Largo. And then they had a coffee. <laughs> yeah. And then there is a team. And then there is a team. Exactly. Which is, yeah. you know, but, but the idea is, again, we are looking at the quality of the product. And one of the things that you have done, and, 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 you know, and I'm glad you explained to people because this is so important, you know, you know, when you go, when we go to a store and we're looking into a product, we need to understand where the product comes from. And, you know, and yeah. our reasoning to personally buy product from Niagara for Speciality or in the early 2001, I was using that product from Niagara for Speciality. It was a specific one because I had to think about the well being of my clients and, of course, now the well being for ourselves. And when we create a recipe, when we look into our Mediterranean lifestyle, okay, it's yes. really looking about the quality of the product that you put in and the quality, yep. Yep. You know, the type of fat you in it, exactly as you yep. mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and guys, even at lunch here, sometimes I, I forget to bring something from home, a salad or what have you. It, again, it's two, three slices of salami. That's it. I'm, I'm you know. Here's um, my... I'd be in trouble working there. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. But, <laughs> so let's, you know, talk, let's talk about the one This, this is going to be lunch. Here's my now, lunch. So, uh, what was that? That, that? that there is my lunch today, right there. Oh, delicious. That's it. Three slices, four slices. Yeah, delicious. I could easily eat the entire salami, but all it's, it's exaggerated. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, and I'm lucky I always have it here, so I don't have to... Uh, so tell us a little bit about the guanciale. So the guanciale is from the jowl of the pig, the cheek. And um, I think it came from necessity, Dario. I mean, if we look back 100, 150 years, four, 500 years, back to the Romans. I mean, you grew this animal, you slaughtered it. What do you do with it now? And somebody figured out that salt preserves. And uh, every piece that's worth harvesting um, is preserved. And the stuff that's more delicate, they would eat tomorrow. So the il fegato, the liver, the kidneys, uh, la testa, all that would get processed meat within a week or two. And then what could go into salt, uh, you know, sustained them for the year. So the guanciale, one of my favorites, especially for cooking, it's got such a rich flavor profile, but yet it becomes delicate quickly. It, it's big impact up front, and then it slowly goes away and lets the other ingredients in the dish take over. Um, for us, I love making the amatriciana, the 
al pomelo, you know, the tomato sauce, uh, the amatriciana. And then there's people who argue, you know, should that be pancetta? I don't care. I love the argument. I love the discussion. <laughs> Just make sure it's good. And uh, One challah any day. Yeah. So, yeah. And that's our sausage. Uh, one thing I got to say about our sausage, it doesn't shrink. <laughs> why? Tell us why. Yeah, so I remember when we started making sausage, we did it reluctantly, um, but we had all this trim meat and um, we couldn't make cacciatore at the time. And uh, so we started making fresh sausage. And I remember my, uh, my wife's uncle having a barbecue and hey Mario, bring some of that new sausage you're making. Let's have a look at it. So I get over there and he went to a local butcher and he bought, you know, 15, 20, whatever he had to buy for the hosting the event. And the sausage he put on the barbecue and they looked identical. I said, oh my God, that's beautiful. How are we gonna compete? I can't believe how nice that sausage looks. Come back eight, 10 minutes later and I realized, okay, we have a competitive edge. Our sausage did not shrink. So I don't know what the other butcher does but I'll tell you what we do. We grind the beautiful pork meat we have and then we add sea salt, black pepper, and then whatever flavor profile. If you want fennel, if you want chili, we'll add wine with garlic, if you want honey garlic, we make it. And that is it. There's no water pumped into the product. We may have wine as the only liquid ingredient. Uh, and wine costs money too, by the kilo. So yeah. it's, not, yeah. it's not like the, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's so true. Right, and uh, yeah, and that's how we make our sausage. So when it goes, when you put down a six ounce link, you're, you know, you're going to get some fat that gets rendered out. And you're going to come off with about a five and a half ounce link. And it looks beautiful. Same girth, same length. And it's a uh, oh, great taste. It's so delicious. Yeah. yeah. And it's yeah. true. You know, a lot of other sausages, you get them and then they end up to this little floppy nothing. You get one yeah. morsel out of it. So that's good to know. Um, yeah. I have a question here. I guess this would be more for Dario, I guess, but Mario as well. But uh, the guanciale, it's meant more for carbonara? The dish? Carbonara is a classico. Okay. A classico. And this is the classico. Someone saying here it's so flavorful. Is it the one that's a preferred ingredient for that recipe? So, yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, so right? that person is stirring the pot for a big debate. Yeah, but I love that. I love the debate, which is great. Because, because someone's going to say pancetta's for the carbonara. <laughs> so. You know, I want guanciale to me is. When we're looking into the region of Lazio, that's what Carbonara, that's what Amatriciana is, is one challenge. Is one challenge. You know, I, I love it. I love it. This is one of the things that it, it changed the complexity. And I'll, 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 I've done it many times in, in classes when I say, make a Carbonara, make an Amatriciana with Guanciale, make an Amatriciana with Pancetta. Be yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess, I guess everyone has to try all your products with the carbonata and see. Someone else also has here that the bodies can't handle processed products and that's why your natural ingredients are really, really important. So that's a good point that somebody had made as well. Very yeah. important. And that's true. Like when there's a, when you have a chemical preservative in your salami, uh, like the sodium ethyrobates, nitrates, nitrites, or what have you, they're a much bigger molecule than the sea salt molecule. Yeah. And when your body's digesting, so you make yourself a salami sandwich or you've been having bread or crackers with your charcuterie board and you got your honey and olives and all the rest of it, as we all know, your body prioritizes the, the digestion and it starts off with the simple sugars, simple carbohydrates, carbohydrates, the sugars, then the proteins and the fats. And six hours have gone by and it hasn't come to the chemicals yet. And your body retains them because now you've gone to your next dinner or breakfast or lunch and we start to cycle over again. And what does the body do? It's got to store these things somewhere uh, before it could eliminate them. Uh, whereas sea salt, as soon as it touches the palate on your tongue, contact with saliva, that bonds with that saliva, goes right into your bloodstream. Um, the natural chemical like ingredients that are in the sea salt, uh, the natural occurring minerals, your cells by osmosis take what it needs. You have a healthy kidney. Your blood is filtered in an hour and uh, you will urinate out what your body didn't need. And it's all natural ingredients. It's all good yeah. stuff. So um, your body knows, you know, it really does. Yeah. It's, it's such a wonderful tool. And when you abuse it with all kinds of chemicals and that, it's really not good. But the next one, is this not the stuff I absolutely uh, yeah. love? This, this, this is, this I stuff is 
my crack. Yeah, me. that's what we call it. This uh, yeah. every time we get it, it's crack, <laughs> and it's yeah. uh, it's the only way I can explain it. You've, you've spiced it perfectly. But it's, it's delicious. But you got to explain explain a little bit about it. Yeah, so I guess in Duya, um, from the Calabrese old school guys I've spoken to, they go back and, and they talk about these crazy cleavers they've got and these old bulls that used to hand chop the meat because, you know, they're probably going to tell you their grandparents or great grandparents might have been sharecroppers or might have, you know, raised a pig for the Il Signore. And the signore kept the prosciuttos and the lombo and he kept the, the guanciale and everything else went back to the poor guy. And he didn't have a grinder. And uh, so they used to hand cut everything. And I think as part of the preservation, a lot of chili went into it to maybe mask an aged pork flavor before it became preserved. And um, in any case, uh, from that tradition, we've got a beautiful... Uh, charcuterie item no doubt about it the anduja is great on pizza it's on wonderful on the crostino sometimes we'll put a cheese on it like a, a sharp cheddar or a, a parmigiano shaved we'll throw it back into the oven and make like a an anduja cheese melt and those are very uh they're very addictive and they can ruin an appetite you know because you can't stop at one you know what anduja anduja it's it's one of those items the less you, because there is so much work creating it as you as you do yeah but one of the things that you always want to make sure is to really maintain the natural flavor you know and i often say don't screw around with the product the product is done you know yeah mario and his team spend months and months and months or weeks and weeks and weeks to work on that this yeah. is why my biggest pet peeve and i was talking to somebody this morning we were on a phone call with toscany you know, and we were talking about product in general. And I said, you know, let's talk about a pizza with prosciutto. And, and the biggest thing that people don't understand, you know, you put the, you make the pizza, you put the prosciutto, then you bake it. That is the craziest thing. You know, the beauty about a prosciutto is the natural way of eating, okay? So if you want to make a pizza, as soon as the pizza come out, you put the prosciutto on it. So the flavor, really, the impact of what Mari yeah. was explaining about, the good fat, those beautiful elements, all those mineral part into that product, come out. Yeah. And, that's, and that brings also to the way you eat charcuterie, okay? Because when we talk about charcuterie, or when you eat charcuterie, or salumi, let's call it, I personally don't want to see a knife and a fork. I, I like that. Yeah, I like using my hands. Hands That's and knife. That's you do it. Yeah. And uh, I know a lot of people don't like it, but it's it's the it's the best way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think there's a lot of information today that that went out, but I think we'd love to have you back again another time to go in more into depth. Maybe come up with some recipes and, and ideas. I know that some people have tried your recipes in the link here. So in Facebook, they put some great recipes. Um, that you guys have to offer. We've got some great ones on our site. So people have a lot of opportunities to try. And I'd love to do some more collaborations with meals in that as well. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an easy product to utilize. And I, and I, and I speak as a, as a cook, okay? When you're using a good product, any ingredients, and, and I really encourage people to go and, and research it. And, and really get that product, because that product makes a difference, not just on your meal, but on your health. And when yeah. we preach all the time, let me tell you one thing. We spend more time figuring out what kind of gasoline to put into our car, yeah. but we never think about what kind of fuel we put into our body. You're 100% right. That's so true. And, and, and I think it's, and I think Mario's given us a, a big lesson for a product then it's so ancient, it's so important, then we really don't understand. And, and you know, looking for something like that, it's a meal, right? Yeah. You yeah. got something that you so want we to just, share. So we got three things that we're going to end with here, and we'd love to have you come back. Number one is we, we, we got our board ready <laughs> to get all Beautiful. your products on. Backyard, uh, was it backyard boards or something? Yeah. They, uh, 
Oh my gosh, we love this board. So we're going to need some of your scootery. So mm -hmm. um, I guess we go to your link that's available at Niagara Specialties. Um, yeah. We'll put the link in here as well um, in the Facebook group, and then we'll add it to wherever else we do so people can go there. We're offering a special for our people in our membership and our International Dinner Club. Um, do you want to explain it, Mario, just so we make sure we got it correctly? Come on, Mario. So we are, um, so that you're going to provide them with a code. Yep. when they place their order and we will be adding a bottle of grandpa olive oil oh my god which is uh, it's not uh, it's excellent quality and it's been winning awards like crazy and uh we'd like to share that with um the uh with your customers and and friends oh and that's so great and that's amazing yeah. and i know yeah. i know this olive oil is that the olive oil from from home no, it, this is a crazy story. One of my customers is of Turkish origin, and he buys a lot of our products. He's, he's, and he went home, and he came back. He goes, guys, you got to try this olive oil. And I'm rolling my eyes like, okay, come on. And guess what? It is fantastic oil. And we took it on as a pet project, and uh, it, it's, it's, it's an excellent, excellent quality oil. And he's reading uh, words already? It's uh, it took 20, it must have had I don't know how many golds in uh, in all of its competitions that it's entered, uh, just in the 2020 Vendemia, and already for 2021 harvest, uh, they just won a medal uh, last week. They entered it early, and it's already uh, took a gold. I can't remember which competition, but my, I was just talking to my brother this morning. That's and wonderful. Me, what yeah. a gift, guys! Wow, wow. That's so, nice. yeah. thank, thank you, Mario. You so much yes. to do that. That's really, really kind of you. So yeah. we'll put the link and all that details for the people in our membership, so they'll be able okay. to have that. And we do have one other question here that we're going to leave with, and I can't yep. pronounce it, so Dario has to do it. Yes, soppressata. You still yes. hate soppressata? Yes. Okay. What is it? Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. this is it. That looks way too good. Yeah. So that there, folks, was made on June. Oh, let me think here. June 24. Okay. And we're just packaging it today. Wow. So how many months is that? Yeah. So that's the three months, not four months. June. So we got July, August, September, and most of October. So almost four months, 18 weeks. Commercially, most guys make that soprasat in probably three to four weeks, tops. So yeah, it, it, it's it's a, it's a, it's a labor of love. I swear to God. I mean, it's uh, you know, we we don't um, we don't we don't realize it. And you know, I, I, you know, we are a bit biased on on the product because we do believe we know how much work is behind it. And and it's not so much the work. I mean, obviously there is a passion, which we always believe. The first thing in the morning, as soon as you put your feet on the ground, passion needs to be high. If passion is not high, go back to bed. <laughs> and and think about the next day. That's and number it. two is, you know, the investment on your life. Investment. I mean, I mean, I don't know if people know. I mean, Mario has a plant in Canada, but in the past what? How many years now? They just three. opened a new plants in the U.S. Yeah, three years in the making. Yeah, and a lot of passion goes into what you're doing yeah. in your business, right? So, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and when people ask which is your favorite. They're all favorites. Yeah. We would, like you said, look back to Dario's passion. If you don't enjoy it, don't do Go it. Go back to bed. <laughs> Go back to yeah. bed. Dream yeah. About something yeah. Else. Dream yeah. about something else. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's that impact. It's that impact you have. I mean, you know, for us, Mario, and I speak in behalf of myself and Anita, is um, when we talk about Mediterranean living, it's mindset strategy, but it's also how you think. And, you know, I go back to the thing about what we put into our system and what, how we, and connecting, you know, we say, yeah. you know, we give you the olive branch, oh, live your life. You know, we shall the olive branch, but the olive branch, you know, I always share with just a piece of bread and some good saloon. That's, that's right. Because that's what I remember when we get home, you know, when we go home to our friends, we sit down on a table and guess what is there? Some saloon yeah. and bread. That's, that's it. it. And obviously, one. I'm getting very hungry. Very, yeah. very hungry. <laughs> well, thank you, you so much, it. Mario, for uh, for joining us today. And again, we have to have a number two. Um, and, and maybe and thank you guys for sharing products and recipes, and, and go from yeah. there. So. Yeah, and, and thank you guys for sharing.
Well, you know, we, you only share quality, right? Thumbs up. Thanks so much for joining us. And we'll be sharing the links and everything on all okay. our socials that we'll be putting out. And it's always an advantage to come live because you can ask questions directly with Mario. So um, cool. thanks to everyone that joined us on the Facebook group. So, so, so we're going to... Hey, we're going to have you guys in our kitchen and we're going to do that carbonara and we're going to do it on matriciana. With, as long as we do it with one chocolate. Can I be the taste tester? <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be the main judge. You know what Absolutely. she's going to you gotta, you only got to keep the Anduilla <laughs> away from her because she'll, you know, Anduilla in this house doesn't last. Yeah, right. Okay, I hear you. Uh, we okay, got guys. that from you one time and it was just heavenly, so. <laughs> All right. Thank well, you, Mario. Thanks, thanks for your time. Thanks have so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.